Hey, Nate. Hey. Can I ask you some question? Of course, go ahead. Why did you give up life in Netherlands? Why did I give up life in the Netherlands? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why don't you come and sit down here and I'll tell you all about it. Sure. All right, so my, uh, my main man, uh, Peter, my editor, my videographer, my everything man, came in and said, Nick, we gotta do a YouTube video because it's been too long. Yes, I missed two weeks of doing a YouTube video. So he said, Nick, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions and you're just gonna answer them honestly about why I live here in Malaysia and uh, whatnot. So the first question is, Nick, why did you give up life in the Netherlands? It's a tough question because I don't believe that I gave up my life in the Netherlands. I just found life elsewhere. So, um, yeah, I, I decided to live in Malaysia and it's been 13 years so far. I live in the beautiful city of Kuching. I've lived in Sarawak uh, for those 13 years. I've traveled to Malaysia quite extensively and I just really love it here. Um, it's not that I don't love the Netherlands. I do, but I just found my life here. And the main reason for that is, of course, my wife. If I hadn't met my wife here when I did my internship in 2011, 20, 13 years ago, if I hadn't met my wife, I might be somewhere else in the world. So my answer to this question is, I did not give up life in the Netherlands. I found a new place to live. I do miss the Netherlands quite a bit, you know, on the daily, especially my family, uh, my parents, my brother and his family. Um, but I've created a whole new life here and this this is my new life now, I guess. Yo, Nick. Oh, there you are. What is your first culture shock in Malaysia? Good question. What was my first culture shock in Malaysia? Wow. I think I should have prepared a little bit for these questions, um, but my first culture shock. I think, I think there's there's a couple of very big differences between the Netherlands and Malaysia. Of course, it's the weather. It's not culture, but those are that's definitely a very big difference. The weather is, you know, very hot here in Malaysia, and in the Netherlands, it's, it tends to be overall a lot colder. So that's definitely um, a, a difference. A culture shock is a. a or maybe the biggest difference between Dutch people and Malaysian people. Malaysian people are always more together. Uh, families are bigger, um, aunties, uncles, cousins, you're always together, or at least that, that that's the way for most people here in Malaysia. And in the Netherlands, you focus more on your core family. I've said this in, in other videos as well. Um, a Dutch family would be the parents, um, and the kids, that, that's like family in the Netherlands. And then for Christmas, you, you would have your extended family maybe come together. Um, but here in Malaysia, the, the general culture is that families are the whole, the big family. So any, anyone under the grandparents, everyone underneath there, that's your uncles, your aunties, your cousins, like they, they come together on a regular basis. So it's, it's more of a family, bigger family oriented um, country, culture. Um, and then another funny little uh, anecdote I had, it was, it was the first day that I was in Malaysia. I was doing my internship here at a, at a local company in Kuching and I was staying at a staff house. So the next day uh, after I arrived, I woke up, I went to a coffee shop and I had some food, of course, as you do at coffee shops. And my bill was like, I don't know, five ringgit and 50 cents. And I left maybe seven ringgit I left on the table um, because I thought tipping was a thing here. And so I walked away, I paid my bill, or I left the money on the table, and I walked away, and around the corner, all of a sudden, I heard shouting, hey, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir! What's going on, what did, what did I do wrong? And then she came back, and she gave me back a ringgit and 50 cents. And that was maybe the first, the really the first culture shock, or I was literally in shock, that you do not tip here in Malaysia, or at least not at restaurants. Little fun anecdote. Um, yeah, so biggest culture shock is, yeah, people are more, you know, close together here in Malaysia. Um, and there's so many different cultures here as well, especially in Sarawak. There is at least 40 plus ethnicities and every group of people is, is different from one another. Um, and that's what I love about Sarawak and Malaysia in general. Uh, that there's so many different people, uh, different backgrounds, different races, different ethnicities, different religions, and everything just kind of works here. So, yeah, that's why I like it here.
Peter, any uh, other questions? Yeah, following question. Does Netherlands tip people there? Do we tip people in the Netherlands? We do generally if you go to a restaurant, you leave a small tip. Okay, another big difference between the Netherlands and Malaysia is that in Malaysia, you would go for breakfast, lunch, and maybe dinner at a coffee shop. You would eat out. Uh, in the Netherlands, maybe you go to a restaurant once a week or once every two weeks because it's quite expensive. And Dutch people, we tend to go to the supermarket to buy our things and to eat, to, to eat and to cook at home. It's a lot cheaper. Here in Malaysia, sometimes it's cheaper to go out for dinner, to have your, your fried rice, your nasi lemak, or your other delicious dishes. It's cheaper to eat out at a coffee shop um, than maybe to cook at home. So uh, we do tip in the Netherlands because it's, it's a special occasion when you go out to a restaurant. So if your bill is like 50 euros, maybe you leave 55 euros and the tip goes to the waiter um, and, and the people in the kitchen. All right, any other questions, Peter? Yes. Oh, there you are. You're, you're moving all around today, aren't you, Peter? Okay, what's your next question? Okay. Why do you choose to live in Kuching and not in another Malaysia city like Kuala Lumpur? That question I like. Why do I choose to live in Kuching and not in another city like Kuala Lumpur or Penang or Kota Kinabalu? Right, um, the main reason is because my wife is from Kuching, her family is here, that's one of the reasons we live here. Um, the second reason is because I fell in love with Kuching even before I met my wife. When I uh, was 15 years old, I came on a holiday and we traveled throughout Malaysia. I was with my parents and Kuching made the biggest impact on me. I just really like the city, I like the jungle around here and I guess that is the main initial reason why I choose to live in Kuching here in Malaysia. Um, I have lived in another city for two years. I lived in Miri because I got a job there. And now why do I still live in Kuching is I just love how Kuching is. It's, it's just a good fit and mix. Uh, there's, there's so many different people and everyone really lives closely together, like I said, all these different backgrounds and, and even religions, everyone is just in one melting pot here. And because I've been here in Sarawak and Kuching so long, I believe that I kind of understand how things kind of work around here and that makes it easier for me to do, let's say, my work. Um, I can create content about Sarawakians and they have accepted me as half a Sarawakian or something. And yeah, let's let's uh, dip into that in a little bit while we're walking to our new cafe, Jatma'an. We've just opened up a Bidayu cafe, so let, let's go over there. All right, come. Hit it, boys. There you are. Come, come. I'll show you. Come inside. So this is our Jatma'an Cafe. Let me switch on the light Whoa. and uh, we'll sit at the bar. Wow. Oh, hey, there you are. Welcome to the Jatma'an Cafe here on Carpet Street in the most beautiful city of Malaysia, Kuching. Yes, we've opened this cafe after one month of crazy renovation. I have pushed everyone all the workers, all the team members here. I pushed myself. I've been sick for over a week, um, but it's okay. And it's also one of the reasons why I did not upload uh, two YouTube videos the past two weeks because I was tired and still a little bit. I've got bags under my eyes, but the cafe is open. We've had an amazing first weekend. We opened Friday and today is Tuesday. We opened until Monday, four days and every night full house so thanks to everyone who came down and supported us and our feedback was good we are still working out the systems here and how everything goes the flow and everything of course we've only just opened and uh, but people said that the food was yummy so if you're ever in Kuching or if you live in Kuching please come down to Jatma'an Cafe and now getting back to the question just now why do I live in Kuching and not other cities like Kuala Lumpur you know, Kuala Lumpur It's a nice city to visit, but it's too busy for me. It's too rushed. Everyone is always in a rush to go from one place to another. I don't really like it. I love Kuching. 
more than any city in all of Malaysia because there's jungle within 30 minute drive. You're either a jungle, um, you are at a beautiful river, there are beaches nearby, there are mountains, the city itself is just nice and bustling, not too busy, just relax and calm. And the opportunities here are good. We've opened up a beautiful cafe, Bida You Food, and I run my social media, and I just have so much fun here in Kuching. Okay, yep, I'm here, another angle. That's a proper a videographer. He said, Nick, we cannot have the same angle. We gotta show, uh, show around the place a little bit, and it's gonna be a better video if we do different angles. Okay, so here I am sweating a little bit, but Peter, do you have another question for me? Yes. Do you regret moving to Malaysia? Do I regret moving to Malaysia? I do not. I must say I did not have the easiest time here for the past 13 years. I've worked for different companies. Some were really amazing. I had little issues here and there. And of course, it's not easy to live in Malaysia. Of course, immigration is always a thing. It's the visa, so it's not that easy. And yes, yeah, setting up businesses here or, you know, working. Um, the pay, of course, is a lot lower than in the Netherlands. So if I wanted to be rich, I would have stayed in the Netherlands. But that's not what life is about. I, uh, I love it here, so I figure out what I can do to live here. Because my heart is here. So do I regret moving? No, never. I never regret moving to Malaysia. Because if there was regret, that means I would regret being married to my beautiful wife. Which I do not. I wouldn't have a son. Milo with my wife, so absolutely no regrets. I am absolutely happy where I am right now in life. Okay, next question, a new place to sit. What is the next question, Peter? The last question will be, if you never moved to Sarawak, where do you think you would live now? If I'd never moved to Sarawak, where would I be? I have no idea. I came to Sarawak um, that time when I was 20 to do my practical, my internship at a local company here. And I always had in my mind that I would not settle down, I would travel the world forever, maybe have a little apartment somewhere. I thought I'd always be single and uh, never get married. Um, that was my mindset when I was 20. So if I hadn't met my wife, if I hadn't met this beautiful lady Magdalene when I was 20, I'd probably or maybe still be traveling around the world and exploring different cities, different countries. But I'm very happy and ecstatic that I met Magdalene when I was 20 years old, 13 years ago. Yes, I admit it was a little bit early in life that we fell in love and um, yeah, that, that, that created this life, that, that spark that was the beginning of our lives here together in Kuching. So where else would I be besides Kuching? If I hadn't met my wife, I might be anywhere all over the world. Uh, probably not in the Netherlands uh, because there's so many more beautiful countries and places to explore besides the Netherlands. And I've lived there for 20 years, so that was, that was enough for me. Um, any other place in the world, I do not see myself living anywhere. I just want to live here. Um, so could be anywhere. So, is that it? Is that all the questions, Peter? Yes, that's all. All right, let me grab the camera. And, uh... <laughs> okay, so, this is the end of the video. I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and I'm sorry I did not upload the video for two weeks, because we've been busy opening up this cafe. So if you're in Kuching, and you're eager for some yummy bidayu food you should come down to Jatma'an you can sit at the bar we've got tables there's a little nook in the back where you can sit the food is good the drinks are cold and delicious and our staff will make sure to take care of you so please come down to our cafe right here on Copper Street in Kuching and um, yeah I will see you either here or on YouTube next time thanks for watching see you again bye bye